Today's video is dedicated to the red, white, and blue. What is up you guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is Kira if you are new and today I'm sharing with you some last minute 4th of July recipes that you can pull together in a pinch. Whether you're trying to do something really fun and different and exciting for just yourselves at home or if you're going out with family and friends and you want to bring something special, I have quite a few things to share with you and they are all super easy. A lot lot of these ingredients we have right at home and if there's anything that we're missing it's nothing short of just a Walmart grocery pickup or a delivery maybe Amazon fresh and all of your ingredients will be right at your fingertips these are extremely inexpensive and something you can even get your kids to do alongside of you everything was so flavorful and I really enjoyed pulling all these recipes together this past week to be able to share it with you guys so we have three desserts and two salads and all of them like I said were fantastic so I'm going to bring you down to the counter in my kitchen and I'm going to show you some cheap inexpensive ways to have amazing fourth of July recipes this first recipe is almost a tradition for me because growing up my grandmother always did some kind of white based cake with a white kind of frosting whether it was cool whip or regular frosting with both strawberries and blueberries to replicate a flag so I kind of took my grandmother's old-fashioned idea and we're gonna amp it up a little bit and we're gonna do a red white and blue trifle so I have an angel food cake here that I've had frozen in the freezer for a bit it's super inexpensive it's like a dollar 99 at Walmart and it's gonna work perfect for this I have some blueberries here and some strawberries here you could switch it up as long as your fruit stays in that blue and red family you could do raspberries and blackberries whatever works and then I have a cup of cool whip here three ounces of cream cheese a quarter cup of powdered sugar and one teaspoon of pure vanilla is going to be the cream that we're going to use so I'm going to make these individually for my kids in like a wine glass but you could do this in a big trifle bowl I would just recommend doing it clear so you can see all the pretty layers in between so in a mixing bowl I'm going to throw in those three ounces of cream cheese the cool whip the powdered sugar and that little bit of vanilla and I'm going to use my my hand blender and I'm just going to whip it up it's going to be a little bit thick thicker than cool whip but it's almost a cross between cool whip and frosting and now we're just going to cut some nice wedges of that angel food cake and we still only need at least for this only one piece because in this clear wine goblet I put a little bit of that cream and then I cut one of those slices in half of pound cake pushed it down on top of the cream and then added a little bit more cream now you can do strawberries first if you wanted to I just did the blueberries first I pushed that other half of pound cake down did another gollop of that uh, cream that we made and then added some strawberries on top I wish I would have ordered some mint because I really wanted something pretty and green so I just used the top of a strawberry but just to give you guys the visual effect of how pretty that this looks so it'll just look really nice if you were to bring that to a party or sitting on your table at home all the different layers and it perfectly has has that Independence Day look. So that grandma is for you. All right, now we're gonna do a salad. And this is a red, white, and blue salad, which honestly, guys, you can play to your imagination with whatever red and white kind of ingredients work. I did a summer recipe video with watermelon, mint, and feta last year. I'll link that video up top if you guys wanna see it. But this is my version for this year. So I have some baby spinach here as our base, and then I have red raspberries as our red component. And then I have some cucumber here. That could be a white component as well and then I have feta as our white component but you could also do some hard-boiled eggs I have some croutons some blueberries I have some cherub tomatoes that we're just gonna pull the red ones out and then in that little bowl I have some craisins I have some roasted nuts the craisins work as a red the pecans work as a white and then I found this Brianna's home style blush wine vinaigrette dressing and I figured that would be perfect it has like a straw strawberry on it so I thought that would be a really nice light vinaigrette to top this salad with now if you're bringing this somewhere or even if you're putting it out on the table I might just 
put the whole salad together and leave the dressing aside and let someone dress on their own. I did dress the salad at the end, but we were actually going to eat this for the dinner alongside of the dinner that we were having that night. But that's it, you guys. We're pretty much just going to assemble the salad. It's super, super easy. I love putting fruit in my salad, especially if you don't like dressing. I feel things like watermelon and pineapple, strawberry that's sliced. It creates like a wetness. So if your palate is not a huge fan of dressing it still gives your mouth that feel that it's just not a dry salad so in the bowl I added my spinach I made sure to peel the cucumber and put that in there so it definitely gives a white effect and then I added some blueberries like I said just the red of those cherry tomatoes and then a little bit of feta cheese I sprinkled in those craisins and then those pecans added a little bit of croutons and then now we're just going to top the dress with dress so if you wanted to just bring that to a party, I would just leave it just where it was. But for me, I was really excited to just go ahead and put the dressing on top. And the night before we had cranberry chicken. And while I was putting the salad together, Daryl reminded me and he chopped up some chicken for me to throw on top. But you guys, that was such a great salad. It was so light and so yummy. All right, so we're on to another dessert right now, and you're going to laugh at me because you're like, here, what is that? It's a couple of ice cream sandwiches and some sprinkles, right? But I saw this idea on Pinterest, and my daughter is huge into ice cream sandwiches. And we're simply going to take the sprinkles, and we're going to put them down onto a plate, and then we're going to unwrap our ice cream sandwiches, and we're going to roll the edges in the sprinkles. Now, this is definitely not something that I would ever do on a regular basis on a every night like I said my kids love their ice cream so I would not do this for them on a regular night but on 4th of July you know it's just kind of one of those special holidays and these are the red white and blue sprinkles that I got from Walmart so they have a red a white a blue section and then one section that has red white and blue stars so I did a little bit of each and I just kind of mixed it onto the plate and then like I said I'm simply just going to roll the sides in the sprinkles and that one little detail of just adding the sprinkles it amped it up so much for the kids their face just lit up when I handed them this ice cream sandwich and it was the smallest little effort but it was such a big deal to them that they truly felt like they were having like an elevated snack so that's definitely something to keep in my arsenal for something fun to do with the kids on a normal regular day all right, so we're going to make a caprese salad. You know that I'm Italian and I love to kind of incorporate some kind of Italian recipe into everything that I share with you guys. And caprese is one of my favorite, favorite things. I love the fresh, fresh basil, especially the basil that I get from Trader Joe's. It is always super fresh and super hearty. And I love that mixed with some really good cherub tomatoes. These are the consolation tomatoes that I get that have all the different colors. I even shared a recipe in my last cookbook with Vanessa where I actually hollow those out and I marinate these mozzarella pearls with gar roasted garlic and olive oil and I stuff them inside of those tomatoes. That cookbook's linked below if you guys want to check it out, but that recipe is phenomenal. But this is a summer caprese salad, so we're going to switch things up inside of that tomato and basil recipe. We're going to add some cucumber to that. I know it probably sounds strange, but believe me, it's fantastic. And then we're going to add some peach and you're going to be like, what? Don't knock it until you tried it, you guys, but the sweet and savory in this recipe is to die for. So this is the Belgicio Fresh Mozzarella Pearls. I prefer the pearls because then you could kind of eat this as a side salad and take nice bites with a bunch of the little pieces of cheese in your mouth. If you do it with the big pieces of mozzarella ball, it has to be more like an appetizer than a side salad. But the key is going to be this balsamic glaze that creates such a wonderful compliment. I do have some olive oil here we're going to add a little bit of salt and pepper but you guys it's simply just a matter of throwing all of these components together and chilled in the refrigerator let me tell you how when I first made this I ate a bowl of it right away but then whatever was left over I went ahead and put into the refrigerator and I ate it the next day and oh my goodness maron what a difference of it ice cold oh my goodness so first things first we're going to chop up that cucumber and for hearty sake I left the skin on this time I don't all the time I make sure to scrub it good if I do but I did leave the 
skin on this time and then I added a handful of those charred tomatoes all colors here is fine we're gonna go ahead and chop up that peach if you see me stealing any fruit or vegetables as I'm prepping this is probably one of my favorite times to prep a salad is to be able to sneak all the veggies in between as I'm putting it together all right so now we've added our peach our basil to our cucumber and tomato. And then now we're gonna go ahead and add those mozzarella balls. Make sure to break them up because they will stick together. We're gonna add some salt and some pepper. We're gonna drizzle with some olive oil and then you'll just give that salad a good toss. And once everything is coated, you can see all is shiny with that olive oil. We're gonna go now and drizzle on that balsamic glaze. So I just did a little drizzle up top and I thought to myself that this would be good if I did a little bit more and semi mixed it through. Sometimes I'll just drizzle on the top and it looks nice. And then when people scoop, they get the flavor, but I really wanted everything to get a little dose. So I kind of put a little bit more and mixed it through. And this is when I said I put it right in the bowl at first. And you guys, it was dynamite, but chill this and eat it you will thank me, I promise. All right, we're at our last recipe now, and this is a watermelon cupcake, and it literally looks like a watermelon. I do wish I had my green wrappers. I'm a little bit upset with them. That would have been the perfect addition, but all right, these are all the ingredients that you're going to need. It's a pretty simple thing. Like I said, most people probably have a lot of this stuff on hand. This is actually a cake mix from Christmas time. You can see it's decorated with snowflakes and everything all over it, and it's white, and I have the three eggs because we need the egg whites and then the oil and water per the back of the box to be able to make this cake and something that we're going to mix inside of it is some gelatin now the only thing I was able to find was the Sonic brand of the watermelon gelatin but we're going to add that to the cake mix to give it like a watermelon flavor and then we're going to top it with a special frosting so I have some white frosting here that we're going to put into a bowl and then we're going to mix in the remainder of that watermelon jello we're going to mix in some of the Cool Whip. We're going to mix in some of that natural red dye. And then we're going to use those chocolate chips to make it look like the seeds inside of the watermelon. And it really just, you guys, this was the easiest thing. Maya did this alongside of me. And we had this done in under 30 minutes because, well, a little bit longer. I wouldn't count the cool time. But you're going to follow the instructions on the box. And you're going to put the cake mix in, the oil, the water, the three egg whites, and then... And I did take that watermelon jello and I took two tablespoons out of what was in the package and dumped the rest in. We're going to use the that reserved amount for the frosting. And then now we're going to go ahead and just put the wrappers into our cupcake holders. Again, I thought I had green, but I must have finished it for Mason's birthday because that's his favorite color and he does Christmas. So I probably did the green wrappers and that would have been perfect if the wrapper was green with the watermelon top and then the seeds. It literally would have looked like a watermelon but I used what I had on hand and then with an ice cream scooper I just filled each one of them three quarters of the way actually some of them I overfilled a little bit which is why I didn't get a full one but then into the oven for 18 minutes and then poof they were done and it smelled like a watermelon Jolly Rancher in my house. Everybody kept saying, wow, you can smell the watermelon in here. It was really strong. And then you're going to go ahead and put the frosting in a bowl with that remaining watermelon gelatin. And then I sprinkled in approximately like one tablespoon of the powdered natural dye and then mixed it all together. And it gave me like this vibrant hot pink. And then now you're going to fold in the Cool Whip and then that's it, you guys. Like mix it all together and then it really really does give you that cotton candy watermelon pink kind of color and instead of breaking out the piping bag and any of the tips if you guys have it you can do that I just went ahead and used a plain old regular sandwich bag again we're trying to be quick and easy I snipped off the tip and then I piped all of our watermelon frosting on top of these cupcakes and then Maya came behind me and finished off the chocolate chips I did do half a tray of chocolate chips and then she was like nah mom watch out let me 
have finished them. So you guys got me putting the chocolate chips on, but Maya ended up doing the rest. And she had so much fun. And again, like I said, this was something super, super easy. They really do look like seeds when you put them in that way. And I just thought this was the perfect cupcake for some kind of 4th of July barbecue or a summer barbecue or sometimes people do birthday parties where they do like a watermelon theme for the one and a melon or something like that and I thought that would be cute for that too but didn't these just come out so adorable Mason said he thought it looked like peeps were piled on top of there which I can see where he got that too but these were just incredible I am not a huge watermelon person but I did taste the frosting and the batter I haven't eaten like a cupcake that'd be a little too much for me but I did taste each of the batter and the frosting and the watermelon flavor is just incredible and it really is something fun just to do for any kind of 4th of July barbecue or something like that. But all right, you guys, that was it for this time's 4th of July recipe video. Like I said, it took me literally 15 minutes to go through five recipes with you guys because these are all simple and easy, but they look incredible. They taste incredible and anybody would be super happy to enjoy any of these recipes if you invited them over and had them on your table or if you showed up at their door with this in hand. I know that I certainly would be. So thank you guys so much for watching. Whatever you do this fourth, be super, super safe. Hug your loved ones. I love you guys so, so much. Subscribe if you are new. Give this video a huge thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye you guys.